Welcome yeah. to this week's video. This is the tier list, the meat and potatoes, as you would say, the firstborn, the tacticus. Uh, there is some. I was going to say primaris. It's, it's the in main here. infantry. It's the infantry that aren't special. It's the infantry that aren't Phobos or aren't Gravis or Terminator or other such. Basically. So oh, it's the meat and potatoes. Already. Should, should we? Should we not do this? Do you want to stay monetized this time? Why, no, you just no say? I've not even got any booze. I'm drinking tea. Uh, okay, fine. All right, I'll try and keep a lid on it. All right. So, as I know, I'm not going to swear. Because <laughs> we've just got to wait for John to say um, the D word, and then he'll get to monetize himself, and it'll be entirely his fault. Fair enough. Yes. All right. Are we just here okay. to make up your Friday video, John, so you don't have to do a better one? I mean, I've I've been working that's not on why you, that's not, videos. You're not just here for that. <laughs> okay, so this is our meat and potatoes. Sing I was going to say this is a single-use tier list. That's what it says on the screen. No, this is a Blood Angels you infantry. You, you could have changed the title, mate. I couldn't click on it and change What kind of low production value video I, is this? I clicked create... Uh, I, I said See, put it in. Tier list. We've not even got interesting and amusing tier names. No, we've got serious tier names because this is serious production volume. It's a here serious on channel, is it? On yeah. the Blood Angels Commander. S, S is for serious stuff. That's what the top tier is there. Yeah. Yep. So, so if, I was going to say, if you haven't met my sidekicks, uh, lesser known sidekicks, Mark. Sidekicks, all right. That's what we are. <laughs> Tony. Okay. You it's can catch than funkies, us. I suppose. I was going to say, uh, better than Fluckies. You can catch us every second week on the Three Grots. Which is a YouTube channel that, if you've not checked it out, you should because it's brilliant. I mean, it's brilliant. It's probably the best channel on YouTube for 4 k content. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, or whatever them. you yeah. like, as Facebook and Discord mods for the Blood Angel Commander community and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to run through. We're going to do this in four parts. This is part one. This is infantry. We have three other parts to do. I believe it's vehicles. It'll be all the special units like Gravis and Phobos, and then the third one is jump troops and some other random things like uh, super heavy tanks because there's one of those so it doesn't really make a sense to do a tier list for a single unit right hey, hey, um, give it give it credit there's two super heavies in the space marine book well not in the book but in the in the in that, the that we get to cover it's true. yeah oh you're talking about the thunderhawk okay i kind of write off the thunderhawk because no you one should. except you plays it <laughs> the thunderhawk's probably better than the Australia's. Well, this this can fit on it. He's read, he's read my plan as to what's actually happening across these tier lists for his video. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, the, the... I, like, I like this. This is, this is the Blood Angels commander taking credit for Mark's work here. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, at least the uh, Astraeus can fit on the table, unlike the Thunderhawk, huh? Yeah, that is, that is a minor issue. <laughs> oh, it depends. You might have those deployment zones, which is like a diagonal thing, and you just put it in the corner. So you you have to have it flying on in turn two, not because it hasn't yeah. got half a hover, because it doesn't fit. That too. Um, okay, right. so, so the, we should I have, get on with this. this is going to be a long video. Yeah, I have the list of units, um, and they do match the list that you made, Mark. Thank you so much for that. Okay, are are they grouped so that leaders are next to the units that they lead in helpful, uh, useful for the viewer and audience format? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, let's see. Well, let's see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's see. Yes, and just move on. <laughs> Um, okay, all right. Okay. Do, you, do you want me to call out which ones they are as they go, or you, you, should we just let you just muddle through it? I mean, I've I've got the list, so I could start this 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 one here is the ancient. Uh, can you even see my mouse pointer? No, we can. It's like oh, yeah, can. slightly. Okay, you can see it. Cool. I'm not sure your viewers are gonna be able to see it. So, uh, yeah, no, the viewers will see it. It's fine. And um, okay. yes, so we're starting with an ancient who is a regular ancient on foot. Some some bloke with a banner. Uh, so essentially, banner. he is the Primaris guy. He has two options. He well, can hold us. Yeah, exactly. So he has a bolt rifle and a close combat weapon, or he has a power sword, or a power weapon as it's called now. That's it. That's his two weapon options. Yep. So uh, while he's leading a unit, you can add one to the objective control unit of that unit. And yep. he has unbreakable duty. While this models with the range of objective marker. And within six inches of the centre of the battlefield, this model has a four-up feel no pain ability. And Which or is... within six inches, sorry. And or. Which is pretty cool. He's only 50 points at the moment, at, at current points of time of, of recording at the very least. Uh, he can be attached to Assault Intercessors, Desolation Marines, Devastators, Hellblasters, Infernus, uh, Intercessors, Stern Guard, or Tacticals. And he can also be attached... Put him on there without, even if there is a captain or a chapter master or a lieutenant in that unit as well. That's where it really comes in. You wouldn't, 
I feel it unlikely you're just going to go, do you know what this squad needs? An ancient. Yes. Just, just have an ancient. Well, at 50 points, he's one of the cheapest characters there are that you can equip to, well, any unit, really. So if you want to have a character to carry an upgrade to buff a unit, he is one of those options. Yeah, and while he's in that unit, they're OC2. That's the other big thing, I guess, he brings. Well, you no, give him things like, you could give him something like Bolter Discipline, couldn't you? OC2. And... They might be OC3 if they're Oh, sure, OC2. yeah, sorry. He's going to give them plus one OC, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Bolter Discipline or something along those lines, because he, he can join Desolators or whatever else. Yeah. Uh, Stern Guard, yeah, as well. All the blasters, maybe. Um, I must admit, I've never run the Ancient in, in 10th edition. I haven't seen the need to. Nor me. I mean, the Unbreakable Duty ability gives him 4 up, feel no pain when he's within 6 inches of a battlefield. Looks good at first glance. It's... Then you realise that, that it's just him, it's not his squad. Yeah. It's almost worthless. Only if, he's I mean, been... like, if you've got to the point, because he's a character, unless somebody's hitting you with precision weapons, like, you've got a unit, you've put them on the um, the objective, you're like, I'm going to hold this objective. By the time they've got to actually attacking him, everybody else is dead and he's just a man with an OC of two. Yeah, he's he's three up with four wounds, which kind of becomes sort of eight wounds with the feel up. F sorry, feel the pain four up, give or take. He hasn't got an invan, has he? No, nope. Nope. no invan. I mean, he's all right for 50 points. But 50 I would, points I'll... for a point of OC, isn't he? That's yeah. really what you're Do I want a point of OC for 50 points? And maybe you do, and maybe you don't. I think most of the time you probably don't. John? Yeah, I mean... I've so many more games of 10th than either of us has with... Well, I'm not... Probably Tony. He's He's been busy lately, and I know I've not played that many. Uh, I feel like there's nothing I could attach him to that would make it super exciting, right? Like, I mean, the only thing I could think of maybe doing is, like, attaching him to, like, 10 Assault Intercessors or 10 Regular Intercessors to try and, like, just have a boatload of OC stuff. Yep. But I feel like I don't run 10-man squads because they're vulnerable to blast. And... The thing you can attach him to is a toughness four three up armor save with no invun squad at the end of the day. Yeah, which, I... let's face it, it's not difficult to kill. You can't put him with a no. You can't put him with a librarian or something to make it give him an invul and make him a little bit more tough, can you? So no, no. I mean, you can put him with the captain if you really want to play armor of contempt on that unit. But I'm sure you've got something better to play armor of contempt on than. A yeah. squad of intercessors of whichever variety. Um, I mean, you can stick him with your hell blasters or something like that to try and put the vault of discipline, but then you can also put um, an apothecary or something like that with that squad, and he's going to bring something as well as the vault of discipline. Yeah, so, my, my yeah. thought is he's kind of crap. You might fall into the C. I could see an argument for putting him on B because I guess you could make 10 intercessors OC 30 or 32. Is there a reason you there? want to put two enhancements in a squad because maybe that's his thing you stick him with a lieutenant in a single squad to put two enhancements on the same squad yeah you say that but then i mean like if you think about it, like an apothecary is like about the same points the apothecary will give you lethal hits the ability to fall back and shoot and stuff like that so you know it's yeah. uh so lieutenant. comparatively you're comparing a little bit of survivability and a little bit of oc for objective control versus raw killing power yeah and there's kind well, of no competition there. With an apothecary, you're getting a little bit of survivability and some extra killing power. Yeah, so I feel like yeah. um, he's a C unless you guys disagree. I like what they're trying to do with him in terms of competitive play, which is what we're ranking these for. This is a swing and a miss. Yeah, I, I'm not even. I think a C might be too high to be honest. I just can't see any reason why I would use him over any of the other things I could attach. Well, see, that's the thing. Nobody's using them, I guess, right? Yeah. So I genuinely think, put him in the bin. He needs to, He needs something more. If he gave that feel no pain to the whole squad, then stick him up in S, but he doesn't. Use the swing vote, Mark. C no, I'll go, with C. I'll go with C. 50 okay. points in the OC and the feel no pain means that at the end of the day, he can stand in the middle of the field, plant his flag, and be, I've got this. Come and take it, motherfuckers. Uh, sorry. But everyone like, can come and take it. Unless they're like Tau Fire Warriors going for melee. True, but you've got the turn of him moving on there, of him just holding it. Mm. So it's a tool. It's not it's not a completely useless tool. It's just a mostly useless tool. Yep. Okay. Um I think we've next up, I guess, 
Are you are you going to put things to go with him now, aren't you? Uh, no, we're not. We're going to do the no, path of we're, we're, we're doing all the characters. All right. We're going to do, do it. The order they're in on the screen. In the list, the, the order they're in. So the apothecary is the standard apothecary, not like the biologist or anything. He has two abilities. One is uh, while this model is leading a unit, uh, you can return one destroyed model, excluding a character, to that unit. Uh, if the bodyguard for that unit is destroyed, you roll a d6 on a 2 plus, you gain a command point. He has a bolt pistol. He has a 3 inch strength 4 minus 4 2 damage pistol. And he has 3 attacks from a close combat weapon. He can a 3 inch range. Wow. It's basically a melee oh, no, that's, pistol. That's his like, um, stabby. Yeah, it's uh, like his, his melee thing. pistol. Yeah. So, um,. He can attach to very similar stuff, Assault, Intercessors, Desolation, Marines, and he was really good with Desolation Marines. He's also possibly pretty good with Hellblasters. Uh, he can go with Devastators, Inferno Squads, Intercessors, Stern Guards, and Tacticals. He's again, the same 50 points as the Ancient. Yeah, again, he can be attached um, to a squad with Chaplain, sorry, yeah. Chapter Master, ch Captain, or Lieutenant. So... So... He's not giving lethal hits or anything. He's not giving any upgrade in damage output. And his melee or whatever is not quite as good as the um, the ancient. Correct. It doesn't give the um, the bonus to the OC. But you get a whole model back each turn. If it's an expensive model like a Desolator, hmm. that's a lot of points. Or That's how I saw him run. He was run with Desolation yeah. Marines. And he was run yeah. with um, Hellblasters. And I think that's probably the two squads you could run him with realistically, yeah. because Hellblasters will kill themselves, he'll bring one back. At which point it synergizes immediately really well with an Arthesium. The problem with an Arthesium on the surface is it looks really, really good. But if something's going to dedicate firepower towards killing your unit, the chance of gonna... killing just yeah. one or two, chance of killing anything but the whole unit, you can't really rely on that. If they want your unit dead, they'll put in a firepower into They're going to want unit do enough damage to it that it goes to uselessness. Yeah, and you they know, might not. wipe it out or wipe it out to the point of it not being a threat anymore. But you've kind of got to bank on them doing that. So in the way, the Arthesium isn't great. But synergizing with the Hellblasters, who kill their own blokes, absolutely brilliant synergy, perfect. So this guy got a lot of play when you could run 10-man desolation squads and have them 30 odd inches away doing all the darn direct fire the opponent would have to direct yeah. fire back and then they could resurrect a guy so you got tons of play with the desolation marines and the desolation marines took like two nerfs and since then i don't think i've seen this guy got any play maybe yeah. there's some play for him in dark angels list and um, because because he could attach to a Hellblaster squad that could be attached to like a chapter master like Azrael, and the chapter master Azrael can give the whole squad like a four up feel no pain or a four up and one save. Then maybe for like Dark Angels, there's he's pretty decent. But well, Hellblasters for... are a good offensive output unit ultimately, they're uh -huh. not amazing, but they're good. They're good, yeah. I mean, uh, in Dark Angels, I think they're amazing, but yes, for so this guy probably sits slightly higher than this ancient, but. I don't think he has as much synergy in the Blood Angels because um, none of the units you can attach to are typically being run en masse by Blood Angels, right? Generally true, but then again, the playstyle of Blood Angels is not great at the moment considering how lacklustre melee is, especially mm. compared to what it used to be and what people are used to it being, which is still a little bit of culture shock for a lot of people. I think Hellblasters are a good option to put him with. I think they're powerful shooting. I think he synergizes well with them. The I fact think that he gets are still. Die. Yeah. If you're going to run, if you want to run Desolators, then sticking in with them for the exact same reason you used to do that is mm. not a bad thing to do. They're such an expensive unit. Bringing one back is going to get his points back very quickly. You've got to bring back what one guy, two guys, yep. to vert his points back. Ooh, and yes, then when they all true. die anyway, you get a CP, which is. Cool, great. Um, Which is better than a is always life. useful. Um, so he's definitely better than the ancient. Um, you know, I wanted to stick the ancient down in D, and I would have put it, the ancient down in D, and I would have put this guy in C. Um, as it stands, I don't think he's quite good enough to be a B at the moment. I mean, he's going to get his points back probably, though, isn't he? He is. He yeah. Only yeah. Two models for a turn. So certainly, I don't think he's going to harm your squad, and he's going to give you a monkey to put um, an enhancement on. 
So let's just set the stage a little bit. Um, the way I view these tier lists um, is stolen off another very, very popular um, podcast channel that, that makes some money off doing things, Art of War. And they, they mix up how they change and name their tier lists. But quite some time ago, they named them in a particular way that resonated with me. And the way I think of S tier is you will see this in every competitive list, 99% of competitive lists you face that run this army. A tiers are, these are good. If you see it in a list, be afraid of them. They're, they're pretty tasty. B is, eh, they're all right. They could run them. They could not. They could be good. They could be not. Depends on the skill of the player. But they're not, like, optimal. C is, mm, not really sure why I'm taking these. Uh, and D is the um, the classic YGWY that they pioneered, uh, yeah. which is quite cool. And in that sort of classification system, Apothecary's all right. He's not great. He's not bad. So... For that, there's an argument as to why I put him in B. He's useful. He's not going to swing your game one way or the other. Sure. You said B. A low B, maybe. But he, I think, be I think with, with an explanation that long, I'd be rude to disagree. Oh, feel free to disagree, <laughs> mate. Absolutely. <laughs> That's fine. Um, That's fine. Let's so, not get uh, hung up with the point. I think he's all right. I don't think he's going to hinder your list. I don't think he's going to help your list particularly either, unless you particularly need a monkey to carry. Uh, yep. And we're absolutely looking forward to all the comments uh, saying how <laughs> we're wrong on every single entry in this thing. Um, oh, no, you've invoked the points. ultimate art of war now, so that means that everything you say, as long as it's in support of them, is is correct. Uh, yeah, because that works, isn't it? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, to be fair. Okay, next up, we've got Assault Intercessor Squads. We all know what Assault Intercessor Squads are. They are guys mainly carrying chainsaws and bolt pistols. They have toughness four. They have two wounds. Be specific, they are the non-jump pack versions. Nothing in here has a jump pack. Yes. Uh, their special ability is when they make a wound roll, they can reroll ones, but if it's on an objective, they can reroll all their wounds instead. Um... The sergeant will get like a power fist or a thunder hammer and he will be able to take like a plasma pistol. Uh, other weapon options in the squad are very limited. Um, yeah, there is no other weapon options in the squad. That's it. The sergeant gets a hand flame or a plasma pistol or a power weapon, a power fist or a thunder hammer. Uh, I used to run five assault intercessors so often. In ninth edition, they were basically in my list every single week. In ninth edition, I would bring them yep. in. I would make a charge, sixty-six percent chance charge. I'd go after a home field objective. I felt like it was a pretty good, tasty, cheap way of doing it. Um, now I just don't rate them at all because um, Blood Angels don't have anything that gives bonuses to charge. It's 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 far too likely to fail that charge, and foot slogging guys with chain swords don't kill that much. Um, and they're quite slow. Rerolling a wound roll isn't bad. I mean, if you're leaning into their ability using them to assault an enemy objective that the objective the enemy is holding, at which point you need them to guarantee a charge roll. So you are you either foot slogging them up the board because there's no real effective way to deep strike them, or you're running them in a transport, probably with an assault ramp like uh, an android or something, uh, and having them get out and then charge afterwards. Um, at which point they'll do a lot of volume of attacks but none of them with any real punch to them, really. So, then again, are they, they're, they're troops, so they're OC2 models, which is nice. So they're, they're, in theory, if you charge them at the right target, <coughs> they'll swamp it with a lot of OC at the same time, and therefore take a bit of a swing, which is kind of tasty. But, again, like John said, they're just too easy to kill. They're 80 points, so you'd be 160 for 10, but I, I literally don't see anyone running 10 of these guys ever. Um, yeah, I suppose if you played like um, the stratagem to give them lance, you know, yeah. when they, they charge out of a transport, they might not be too bad, but then you're paying how many points for the transport plus the 160 yeah. points they are. I just don't see them, so I feel like they're probably just in a B. Like, they, yeah. they could be useful, maybe. But we just we don't see them. Uh, I'm so hesitant to say they're a C. Um, I think I'm less down on them than you guys are. Actually, the okay. way I see them is their biggest competitor in a lot of ways is the jump pack version, because for ten points more you gain a jump pack, which is really cheap. Two points for a model. Um, yep. but you lose that nice 
bonus or reroll wounds against um, units on objectives. If you're playing a very terrain heavy, you game, also lose the OC because they're not troops anymore. Uh, and you lose the OC because they're not troops anymore. So if you're playing in a game that's quite um, terrain heavy, 160 points, especially if you're in Sons of Sanguinius, then every guy's going to get five attacks, hitting at strength five, AP minus one. You can put Lance on it as well, which means that you're going to be wounding anything that's lower than toughness 10 on a four up. Yep. Um, I don't think that's bad for 160 points. You could stick the aforementioned um, what's, uh, Ancient in there as well. It's going to be a bit more OC. And then you've got... I'm, I'm not saying you should, but you've got a fairly cheap unit that will clear infantry off of objectives. So if you're playing in a very terrain-heavy thing, cheap unit clears other infantry off fairly efficiently, especially if you stick a power fist on the sergeant, and I don't see why you wouldn't. And one of the good things about them is they're one of the few units that Mephiston can currently join. And, and they're one of the few units that Mephiston can join, um, and he's not bad. Yeah, his big problem is he's not much that he can attach to. Um so, okay, so yeah, they're, they're not bad. bad. Uh, the question is, good. are they good? Yeah, I don't think they're good, but I think that they're probably more useful than the apothecary. So then they're probably a B then, right? I think they're a, a relatively high B. I don't think you're harming your list. And if you build your list to, you want those volume of attacks for your meta, then they could almost be edging towards an A if you've got, yeah. if you're playing a lot of stuff that's running a lot of infantry. I know. We're talking competitive games at the moment. Competitively, people aren't running big halls of infantry. But just think the other day, John, you got mashed by guard. Yeah. Um, because you couldn't kill enough guard. Yeah, I mean, the true, they kill guardsmen. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, if you if you'd a had a guardsmen. few chainsaw units in your army, you might have had a bit of an easier time against that because there are a few anti-meta metalists yeah, true. running those sort of big infantry hordes. And this is quite a nice little answer to it. So, yeah, I think I'm a bit higher on them than you are. Okay. But, yeah, um, I, th yeah. I think high B is fine. Um, they're very situational, I think, like you said, an anti meta meta list, <laughs> then they're good. So, um, yeah. they, they don't, for me, they don't play to what the current strengths of Marines are. And unfortunately, very few, if any, of the models in this particular tier list do. But we'll, we'll cover that more as we go through. Okay, next up we're talking about the Bladeguard Ancient. This is the specific Bladeguard character that can only attach to the Bladeguard. Unfortunately, he himself does not have a blade. He just has a bolt pistol. So, uh, not, so to reuse a joke from last time, he's not got a blade and he's not very good at guarding anything either. Go on, say it, say it, say it, say it, Tony. You haven't said it yet. What? Oh, we shit. <laughs> uh, really? Yes, um... So, this model leads a unit, you add one to the OC, so I guess it means your blade guard become two OC. And once per battle, when this model unit is selected to fight, this model can use this ability if it does until the end of the phase, you add one char one attack characteristic to melee weapons equipped by models in this unit. So basically, once per game, you can give your squad of six blade guards one extra attack. Um, so potentially the most you can get out of that is seven extra attacks once per game. It's important to note, I didn't realise this till last night, so yeah. you can attach this to a unit that already has a captain, chapter master, or lieutenant. But if you've already attached a captain and a lieutenant, then you can't attach because you can only well, attach yeah. two. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Did if you not you know that? attach him to something with a powerful captain in it as well, then you get another attack out of that one. Yep. And then if you stuck it in Sons of Sanguinius to get an extra attack that way as well, then you could start stacking up the attacks on your blade guard if you really wanted to. I'm just not sure why you would. Uh, I mean, the, the blade guard aren't bad because they get that built in reroll yeah. ones to hit. The problem yep. I found with blade guard is you need to be playing Lance on them because if you don't have Lance, then most of the time they just bounce off the enemy. Yeah. Um, so I feel like you'd have to attach a captain to get the free use of lance and then you attach the ancient but at that point the ancient's like 40 points would you not just be better off attaching like a lieutenant for 10 points more that has lethal hits potentially I guess it depends on is lethal hits on your blade guard from like the 40 attacks you're getting or the 30 attacks better than having OC one more on a bunch of blade guard I, I think feel like is, yes exactly um, yeah. the lieutenant's bonus isn't just a one-off either is it 
Yeah. No, and this, the lieutenant's bonus the also gives you fallback and charge, which means yeah. when you inevitably get charged with a blade guard, you don't want the opponent to fight you again first. You want to fall back and charge, so you fight first. So the ancient, in that way, feels in superior to lieutenant. I can't, and also he's got no weapon, whereas lieutenant can have like a power fist or something like that uh, for combat. I mean, arguably lieutenant could probably have a plasma pistol and a power fist, so just better weapons all round. So the blade so, guard ancient is another way of phrasing it. At Forty-five points. He's double the points of your average upgrade, give or take. That's a good upgrade um, to a character. And the upgrade gives plus one to the OC of the models in the unit, and once per game, plus one attacks to all models in the unit. And it can be only given to Blade Guard. Is that really worth a 45 point upgrade? No. Not even a little bit. Yeah, not even a. Um, he's really not improved with his transition from 9th to 10th. Yeah, so, so I know we're going to get to Lieutenant in a minute, but when you talk about like. I'm still going to call them lieutenants. I don't care. Yeah. All, all okay. of our audience can be American. I'm still going to call them lieutenants. That's fine. So the lieutenant is 65 points, who gives fallback and shoot and charge and lethal hits and has a power fist and has a Volkite or a plasma pistol. It just, it's, it's, for me, I feel like the Blade Guard Ancient has to sit in C. Is he dumpster? I mean, arguably could be. I can see I can see a board use for the ancient barely. The blade guard ancient? I'd, no, um, I'd rather take the ancient like every single time. Because yeah, sure, I lose a once per game bonus of an attack. Um, but at least he's got a bloody blade. Yeah, so is he C or is he D? He's in the bin. He's in the bin. He's in the bin. All right. him in the bin. Unless you want him out of the bin. Okay, so we are moving on to Blade Guard Veterans, a Woo unit that we all kind of liked a lot. Last edition? Oh, we love do we like, last edition. Do we love Absolutely. them this edition? I mean, more than Assault Marines, sure. Sure, yeah. Uh... <laughs> but hang on, Assault Marines have been taken out of the game, so... Assault Intercessors, whatever, fine. <laughs> Pedantics. Um, Bladeguard Ancient... It's semantic, get... actually. Pedantic I was going to say... the name of the person who uh, is being pernickety. About these true, things. true. So they get two abilities now, Sword of the Chapter, Shield of the Chapter. Basically, at the start of the fight phase, you choose one of these, either re-roll uh, hits of one, or you re-roll invulnerable save, saving throws of one. And they got a four pit one. Yes, so uh, that ch that changes it from a fifty percent chance to make the end one to a fifty eight percent chance if you care about the math. I do care um, about the maths. I enjoy yeah. the maths. So uh, they they get a good number of attacks, four attacks each, strength five minus two two damage. I guess the issue I have with them is their strength. Again, they're going to be like a command point sink because you need more than strength five to be really effective in tenth edition. Uh, their pistols. You know, a heavy bolt pistol is what it is. It's a 18 inch minus one yeah, bolt you never pistol. Took them for their pistols, really, did you? No. You took them for their swords and their big stonking shields and their three wounds. Yeah, so, and they're 90 points for three. At time of recording. I like three of them. I will play three of them. I'm happy to put three of them in any of my list. I don't like them in sixes and I don't like putting characters to lead them. Um, and when I use them as three, I have them typically sit on objectives and hold them. And I feel like if you try and take that objective with chaff, they will kill your chaff. But I don't really see them as killing much more than chaff. Strength five, even in Sons of Sanguineus, it's strength six, but you get five attacks on each other, 15 attacks. You lit with 10 of them. Yeah. So you lit with 10. They won't get much of an armor save, but they will get a bit of an armor save. Potentially, because only AP minus two, you'll probably kill six space marines with that. Are they damaged too? Yeah. Yes. yes. They'll be able to kill six space marines if they get to attack before they're attacked. They're 90 points, and that's only if you're in Sons of Sanguinius. Oh, hang on, I haven't done that out, rather. No, less than that. Three space marines. Not worth it. Yeah, I think people have been running six of them attaching Judici R, so they fight first. People have also tried attaching like a captain so that they can, um, you know, get that free CP usage of Lance out of a transport. I think that's possibly the best way to run them. I kind of like them in a squad of three. 
I think like if you were going to pay 90 points for five intercessors to stand on an objective, or you can pay 90 points for five blade guard to stand on an objective, I feel like blade guard have a few advantages in that. They've got the storm shield, they also have three wounds, which is awkward because everything seems to be two damage now, so three is a good break point. Yeah. And I guess if you do charge them, like you said, the swords are going to kill chaff. So I think they have a use. I think they're possibly yeah. sneaking into A, but I don't like the big squad personally. The um, unit is 70 points if you bring them with them. Um, so that would be 160 points for four people with fight first if you charge them with reasonable but not great resilience because they're still only toughness four at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and reasonable offensive ability but not for anything with like toughness five or higher. So Yeah, I think the big difference between ninth and tenth was there used to be maybe minus three. So I guess their swords used to be pretty deadly when they wound. Now the dropping of AP so has made a massive difference to the game overall. The dropping of AP and the losing of plus one to wound. Mm. For really me, blood angels, yeah. They're, they're more they're more of a defensive unit now than they used to be in some ways. I completely agree. Um, yes. Would I rather have three of those sitting on an objective than five intercessors sitting on an objective? You've got slightly more wounds with this. They've got slightly more melee with this. Um, or five heavy intercessors for comparison. Five heavy. I'd rather have five heavy intercessors. I think. Yeah, I probably would as well. That's probably why I don't run them anymore and just run heavy intercessors. But um, I don't think they're bad. I don't think they're bad, but I don't think they're that good either. Hmm. They're, bit, they're a niche choice. They'd be good into particular matchups. Against other matchups, yeah. they'll be completely useless. So. I just don't think killing a couple of space marines on the on the um, on the charge is enough to warrant ninety points. Yeah, I'd go B. They're not B. they're not great. They're not bad. You know, yeah. I mean, I know my maths was ropey there because I forgot the wound roll, but um, just with that, you know, hit ten times, wound two thirds of them, so wound seven times. They're going to save a third right. of them, so yeah, you what? might just about kill a squad of intercessors on the charge. Yeah, yeah, it's not great. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, I think IB seems fine. Uh, let's talk about Brother Corbulo next. So, disclaimer the first, or possibly the second, if John's put a disclaimer at the start of this episode. As of time of filming, the units that Corbulo can join are limited to the ones that were in the Index Codex Space Marines. Sorry, Index Space Marines and not the Codex Space Marines. Therefore, out of the units he can join, the four units the update sheet says you can join, two of them don't exist anymore. Thanks, GW. Please fix your bloody index. Um, so that is going to colour how we rate this unit and pretty much all of the other Blood Angels units. Yeah, because we can't rate based on we think he might get to because we just don't know. It might be when they go around and start reconnecting yeah. things and rehooking things up, they just remove him. So... If they follow the precedent they did with other characters in Codex Space Marines, he'll be able to join things like Assault Intercessors, possibly even Blade Guard, things that are actually interesting. But as of right now, Corbulo, the lead apothecary, can join a tactical squad of Firstborn or a Devastator squad. And both of his buffs are melee buffs. and no. Uh, well, sorry, one of them, I suppose, is a melee buff. Um, one of them is a 5-up Feel No Pain. Which is a really good buff. It would be a really good buff on those Blade Guard, yes. We'd we'll probably yeah. be able to push those Blade Guard up into TRA or something. Yeah, but, or even um, Assault Intercessors. It'd be amazing. Yeah, we'd help Assault a lot in Assault Intercessors. Yeah. Uh, five Up Feeling No Pain is really, really strong. So, yeah. uh, based on this, I think he is crap because he buffs... He gives units extra attacks. I mean, you wouldn't really want your Devastator squad in melee combat. Your tactical squad, while it can get in melee combat, no one's running tactical squad. Literally no yeah. one's running them. You, can't, you have to feel them in size of 10. No one's doing that. So he's got he's got nothing he can join into. If he was twenty points, I might buy him as an upgrade that gives five up feel no pain to a dev squad or attack squad if I was taking them. But I'm not taking them anyway, frankly. Spoiler. Yeah. Uh, um, how many points even was he? So he's seventy five points. Absolutely not. Yeah, in the bin, mate. Sorry, it's... swing and a miss. He's Sorry, a brother Corbello. Um, you have a terrible. You've old not been good for four editions now. now. One day, hopefully, GW will not do you dirty. He had a very, very brief moment, didn't he, where he was all right. <laughs> yeah. And then... I think he used to have an aura of strength from the Red Grail. Was that when he yeah. was all right? 
He was, he was theoretically good in ninth, but the fact that he was always foot slogging, where everything you were bringing was jump pack, yeah. made him a, a problem. It was the so, fact that he always put you'd everything always bring around other him in the assault instead. doctor. meant that you could yeah. do some funny things with him in ninth occasionally, but... Okay, next up, let's talk about a captain. And there's there's various ways you can arm this captain. There is obviously the way that I have on screen, which is basically the relic shield and the uh, sword that would be joining the blade guard. He can also just have like a power fist and a plasma pistol. If you want, if you have the game day captain, he can also have like a master crafted bolt rifle. Um, master From being crafted... heavily restricted data sheet so you can only take them in this configuration this configuration this configuration they've made so many different versions of the primaris captain now that he's just as versatile as he ever was really yeah so there's like three or four versions of him um he will join assault intercessors blade guard veterans but only if he's got the shield company heroes the hellblaster squad but there's a restriction he has to have a plasma still if he wants to join hellblasters in furnace intercessors stern guard or tactical squads he gets once per battle round you can use a, a battle stratagem on your unit for zero cp once per battle at the start of the fight phase he can get three extra attacks in melee and those attacks or the weapons for that fight phase have devastating wounds so like Just once per day slightly the once per battle round free battle tactic stratagem <laughs> is per one captain on if you've got multiple captains on the field only one captain can use that ability so it's oh, worth thank noting. you yeah good 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 call yes um so the best case scenario you could have maybe like um eight attacks from a power fist once per game with dev wounds hitting on twos yeah. of course um so yeah uh he can join a bunch of different stuff in practice um However, I don't think I fielded a, uh, I was going to say a firstborn captain. I guess I don't feel like I fielded a tacti tacticus captain because mm -hmm. I don't think I've got anything that would benefit overly from having a tacticus captain with them. Um, Bladeguard do seem like the one option for me, yeah. but um, I don't like Bladeguards in squads of six because I don't think they're killy enough, so I haven't, I haven't attached a captain and tried that with a Bladeguard. Okay. Well, if he did so, he would give them a free uh, red rampage or, or lance buff from the stratagem, which would help a lot. Which would help a lot. Yeah, and getting Actually, those. How many points is he? Uh, a captain is like eighty-five points. Eighty points. points. So oh, 80. 80 points. And he's going to give you a strat turn effectively, and a little bit more melee punch. Really. Yep. Um, is a bit more melee punch in your unit, and the free strat worth eighty points. Probably, if you're running something you can go with that likes to be in melee. If yep. you're running play guard, then yeah, sure, 80 points seems a reasonable buff to that squad. Um, anything else you can go with that would be worth it? If someone says so if you use the Sons of Sanguinius, Red Rampage is a battle tactic, so you could get the plus one to wound from that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, I don't think the Gladius version is. No. Company Heroes, why would you do that? We haven't got to them yet, but no. Stern Guard, no. So it's if you're running a big unit of Blade Guard and you want to give him a free thing a turn, then sure, run him. If you're not, then you probably aren't running him yeah. anymore. I'd agree. Uh, it's not so good. Sorry, Honor of the Chapter is a battle tactic, Mark, so you would be able to get the extra AP and Lance. Oh, honor the, is Honor of the Chapter the one that gives plus one to wound? I thought yes, it was a fight yeah. on death thing for the name. No, only in death is duty end is the fight uh, on death apologies. one. My apologies, I got them mixed no up. Problem. In which case, yeah, my apologies. Sorry. So... If you're running a load of blade guard and you want to buff them up, then you probably would be looking at this guy. Very than that, yeah. So based, based on that, he's a B, a high B next to his blade guard buddies. I don't know if I feel like he's good enough to be an A. He's not. No, good he's as good as what he can join. Ultimately, he gives yeah. some good buffs, but limited to what those buffs are useful for yeah which kind of tells you what we think about pretty much everything the captain can join for the rest of this tier list video i suppose True. doesn't it, it does. True. uh okay next up then uh commander no commander taiko captain taiko yep the not lost version um, another poor victim of not being updated when the codex came out yeah. A huge victim of not being updated when the Codex came out because he was one of the most unique and fun models at the start of 10th edition for me. I ran him more times in those first two or three months than I ran him in my entire life. Yep. Uh, his melting gun is very good. His anti-infantry 4 plus dev wounds melt the 2. 
Uh, if he's attached to a squad, he can give the squad rapid fire, which means you would get three shots at 12 inches with that melty gun. Um, he can also give the squad, I guess, heavy or assault if he wants. Uh, his dead man hand was pretty good in melee. It was basically six attacks, minus one, two damage. And um, the first time damage was allocated to Tycho, then it became 12 attacks. So if the enemy ever tried to precision him or anything like that and did not finish him off, suddenly you have 12 uh, two up hits. Strength four, minus one, two damage. It was pretty tasty. I felt yeah. like he had a lot of utility. There was a few cool squads you could join. He used to be able to join assault squads, command squads, tactical squads, and vanguard veteran squads. Unfortunately, all that is left now is the tactical squad. Yep. Which is... And based on that, put him in the bin. That right down there next to Corbulo. Uh, I feel really sad about that because... Yeah, I do too. I totally agree. This is, this is one of the reasons why the I company? really appreciate Art of War's titling of this tier is YGWY. Eight minutes to fix these bloody data sheets and re-upload them. Yeah. Can he go with um, Foot Death Company? No. Right, yeah. The, the, um, the lost one can. I, I emailed Games Workshop about that this week. If you go to join to Assault Intercessors, or if you go to join to the new Company Hero Squad, and what's messed up about the Company Hero Squad is if you actually... We're going to come to Company Heroes in a minute, but when you read their data sheet, it says the Company near Heroes need to be led by a Captain or a Chapter Master, or they're instantly destroyed. I was like, he's a friggin' Captain! It says it in his name! He should be able to join the Company Heroes! This, this isn't the first time we rant about Blood Angels, as if it was by Corbulo. It's not going to be the last. Perfect. Right, right come on, move on. We'll try to keep point. it short. There's no point born... ranging over this. Okay, firstborn chaplain on foot. He gives a unit plus one to their wound roll, and also at the start of any phase, you can select a friendly adept as a starter's unit that is battle shocked within twelve inches, and they're no longer battle shocked. Um, which I think actually is better than probably we give it credit for, because just being able to remove battle shock um, twelve inches in a in a bubble. If you think about that being a twenty four inch diameter bubble, um, yeah. removing battle shock can be pretty clutch. Um, at the start of any phase. So you fail battle shock in your command phase at the start of your movement phase. Yeah, that one unit I need to do the action or one unit needs to do this thing. They're not a battle shot. This is the first model that we've looked at so far that in the entirety of 10th edition to date, I've actually considered putting in one of my lists. Yeah. Uh, is there a time point? Okay. I haven't. It's because I prefer the uh, Terminator version. Yep. So he's... Okay. Do you know what? I've been playing him wrong. I thought he was strength five. He's strength six. Yeah. I think he's great. If you, you know, we talk about how to buff your blade guard, I'd stick him in there any day. He's the 60 aura, points, mate. He's 60 points. So he costs less than the captain, and he has functionally almost exactly the same effect. If by you're giving assuming him plus you're going to be giving him plus one to wound, which you're probably going to be doing anyway. That's what he does, just flat. So less points still gives him plus one to wound, but um, it doesn't, it's not Lance, it's just plus one to wound. So, even in your second round of combat, that still applies. Yes, uh, so in, in all intensive purposes, I think he's great. Um, what else is there to save? He's got a four up invulnerable save, he's got yeah. four wounds, he's got leadership five up. Yeah. That's pretty good as well, actually. Uh, yeah, out know, of all cause... the units he can join, the two melee versions are the assault intercessors and the blade guard. And yeah, and frankly, both would really benefit from him. You, you put him with 10 assault intercessors in a land raider. That volume of attacks with plus one to wound, you're starting to talk yeah. something resembling a punch now. I don't think I'd bother with the Land Raider, but let's stick him in Sons of Sanguinius to give all of your Assault Intercessors five attacks and an extra point of strength. So they're all strength five with plus one to wound. Granted, their AP is in the toilet. But... Their AP is in the toilet, but they've got a captain. In... Sorry, they've got their sergeant in there with his power fist as well. Um, and they can reroll all wounds if you and they can charge out. Or... Then you've got a unit that's going to clear things off objectives relatively efficiently. Yeah, just and you... Yeah, yeah. Um, I think but... he's all right. Um, yeah, I don't. I, if I'm running, I think he's a the... unit I think... that he can join. I'm going to probably seriously consider running him over any of the other options on this list. I, I think if you want to run six blade guard, I'd probably attach this guy to him. I think he gives those blade guard the most punch, and I'd probably be willing to put him into a or I... even death company because he can still. I think he can join Death Company. Or can I don't he not? Think I think I got this wrong because of the whole keyword mix-up that they haven't done He yet. can't anymore because of the um, keyword mix-up. Uh, 
He can. He can. He can. He can oh. actually join Death Company intercessors and Death Company can be joined by a chaplain because the name of the unit chaplain has never not changed. changed. Ah, okay, okay. So yeah, so I think he's a solid A. To be honest, I think he's really good. Do you know what you're right? <sighs> if if you're running any know. kind of melee units, he can attach. He's an excellent pick for seventy points, and he'll give him a nice buff. <laughs> See, I don't know. He's still only as good as the units he can join, and I'm yep. still not sure I put any of those units in A. He's I think, really good with the units he goes with. But I think because... he would be okay with Firstborn Death Company, actually. You know that? Because that unit has sustained one if it's below starting strength, or sustained two if it's below half strength. And remember, Death Company do get... Um... Yeah. Reroll all hits. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get you, but... Are you going to be running Death Company on foot to put this guy next to? Or well, I don't have any model with... Packs? Yeah, a minor or model with jump packs. Let's but assume yeah, you've I've, got them. Then might, I might have... I was looking at a Rhino the other day. The Rhino takes 12 guys, so you could have him and 10 guys in a Rhino. I mean, that's pretty cheap. What would that be like? How much points are Death Company uh, in uh, Marines at the moment? I know that no. with jump packs, they're 130. Uh... You tell Death me. Company Marines are 115 or 230 for 10. So, 200, so 300 points plus a Rhino. Mm, okay, yeah, maybe not. The Rhino is starting to get a bit too expensive, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I well, really then... like but I do know what you mean. He does suffer a little bit on what you're going to attach him to and are you going to run any things that you're going to attach him to. Um, people are running Blade Guard and they are running them successfully. People are running Assault Intercessors a little bit. Um, and that's like anti meta meta or whatever. But I would put this guy right at the very top of B, absolutely without hesitation. I wouldn't actively look to include him in my army. Yeah, I think just, just because, because we've got the, the, the choice of the jump bag units. Do you know what? I think they'll be you can add them to Blade Guard. If you wanna if you wanna make Blade Guard good, I think this is the one way you can make Blade Guard good. So I think I I give him A. I think he's the bottom of A then. Okay, fine. He's the very bottom of A. He's the lowest model in A. Because a lot of people want to make six blade guard work. I don't think six I mean maybe six blade guard work with a captain, then you then you're limited on your battle stratagem has to be used every turn on them. There, there is a huge blood angels aren't a, a CP, even Gladius. We're not an army that generates CP. We don't have a lot of CP. I find myself always. You want CP for interrupts. You want CP for armor of contempt. You want CP yeah. for smoke screen. You know, like yeah. you run yeah. out. You want CP for reroll charges. You know, like very quickly you have no CP. So yep. being able to plus one to wound those blade guard for no CP every turn, and people are putting blade guard inside land raiders. That is a thing that is happening. So. Oh, yeah. So we will make it conditional. I, I don't agree with putting him in A, but I appreciate both your points. So, cool. Well, you were talking earlier on on the Grotty channel, I think it was, when we were talking about um, Sons of Sanguinius and making um, and Land Raiders, and you were talking about Repulsors. And you were talking about running Blade Guard in Repulsors. It does work. I've been doing it a lot. Yeah. It would be nice to for for if you got sixty points end of the list, that's a buff that you would play for in the blade guard plus one to wound for the whole game. Yeah, and I mean, like well, we said, ultimately you... the chaplain's buff that he grants to a unit is the best buff out of every single character on foot that we yeah. have to grant. Yeah, to yeah. and his battle shock thing's no joke either because at the end of the game, sometimes you need to hold an objective. If he's still yeah. around, like uh, yeah, I can save your CP at the end of the game as well. So I think I think he saves CP because you don't need to spend anything on him, and he's cheap. And he's cheerful. I think he's an A. I think he's the one A so far. Leading, especially if you're leading into Sons of Sanguinius. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Next up, Chief Librarian Mephiston. Will be the first Blood Angel unit not in the Get in the Bin tier. Will he? But not by much. <laughs> of all the changes, they still can't give him a sword that's more than D3 damage. I don't understand why. Well, Sword actually took a giant nerf. Like yeah, giant. The most iconic power he had that he used in almost every game you put him in was wings as well. And no, no sign of it. He victory. can't fly, he doesn't hit as hard as he used to. The only <laughs> thing I will say, and this is completely subjective, and um you know like how anecdotal evidence is worthless. Yep. Yes. Um 
I took him the other day to the school and I yep. was helping some kids play their very first game of Warhammer 40,000. Yeah. And we were playing Blood Angels versus Tau. Yeah. And um, we managed to get Mephiston and Farsight into combat with each other. And Mephiston's always strike first coming into play there. Um, and then he fluffed all his psychic powers in the round before, so he didn't manage to hurt anything. But then his transfixing gaze managed to transfix in gaze Farsight to death. Yep. Which was amusing as all hell. These kids went absolutely wild when the vampire lord stared down Farsight <laughs> so scarily that he actually died. For sheer coolness value, he would be right at the top of A oh, with yeah. no issues whatsoever. With no less. King of the yeah. Edwards. He's 110 I... points. He's the lowest amount of points he's ever been. He's got grenades. He can join two units rather than the three. Thanks again, GW. Well done, mate. Um, and the two units he can join are an intercessor squad and an assault intercessor squad. I mean, you can still go and join Stone Guard. They still exist, right? No. Are you oh, sure? Uh, are they called I mean, Stone Guard Veteran Squad still? I'm sure they're just a new version of the Stone Guard squad. What else are they? Yeah, called? you're right. My bad. Sorry. I'm missing. But, I mean, I think they, they, they lost the ability to have any melee weapons, so that makes them a bit sad. Yeah. Um, he, 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 he can join he, Stone Guard and make them a melee threat. He can join Intercessors and make them a melee threat. He can join Assault Intercessors and make them more, more of a melee, melee threat. threat. <laughs> and a pretty yeah. solid one, because he's, he's punchy. He's not one... quite first, but only goes on those units, really. His, yeah. The re-rolls he would get to his wound rolls from Assault Intercessors would help him a lot for his sword. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But the the one thing to say is if you if you go back in addition, his sword used to wound like bloodthirsters, for example, on twos, and now wounds them on fives. Yeah. It's it's had a horrendous nerf. Um, it so is still three AP, three, AP, which is quite rare. It is, but I still think like it's the D three damage is the count. The fact that it's psychic, I don't know what that helps. It doesn't help in any way, shape, or form. I guess um, no, it doesn't, doesn't help at all. It is a hindrance to things that resist it. Yeah, and he did finally get an invun save, which is nice. Uh, yeah, as well as his five but feel no pain, which is nice. Yeah, he's pretty and tough. So I, I see more of his defensive unit now, right? Absolutely. The fight first ability is purely a defensive ability. It's it's of no use offensively, really. Yeah. Um, um, so you want to give it to a unit that you expect to be charged, at which point it doesn't directly synergize with assault intercessors because you want them to be charging onto objectives. So if you have uh, either intercessors or stern guards sitting on an objective, Mephiston will help them hold that a little bit stronger. Um, I suppose also if you do take an objective with your squad of assault intercessors, um, he's going to help protect them from counter charges to get them back off again. Because cool. if you charge, yeah, yeah, if okay. you try, try and charge them back off again, they're going to hit you first. Yeah. Um, so maybe Fair in point. that well, case, P could be useful. I tried him a couple of times in ninth and felt he was super underwhelming. He's only um, 90 points as well, isn't he? 110. 110. 110. But I, I just felt like he didn't do any damage when I played him. Yeah. It didn't really matter that he was survival. Yeah. He never did any damage. Uh, it was hard to get him into combat because he doesn't fly anymore, like you, you which, mentioned. Which is the song of melee this edition, in general. Uh, so um, I think he's not very good. I don't think... I think we're desperately trying to make him good because he's the coolest thing we have, pretty much. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm trying to justify the fact that I'm not going to put him in D tier. Um, I think he's. I don't think he's a hindrance. He's, he's a bit too overcotted for what he brings, but 110 points to make a unit really difficult to charge um, and up their melee a little bit and turn a unit's not much of a melee threat into a bit more of a melee threat. If he could attach to something useful, I'd put him in B, maybe A. Given what he can attach to, I'd sadly have to put him in C. I'm with Mark. I, th I think if he could attach to like aggressors... Um... Or maybe Blade Guard. I could put if, him in A or B. What what bugs me is every other character of his caliber that is uh, Primaris that couldn't previously join Blade Guard in the Index Codex Space Index Space Marines have been changed, upgraded, and added Blade Guard joining to them in Codex Space Marines. Yeah. So if they do the upgrades and the updates that they really need to get around and piss and do, maybe he'll get it. But yeah. for now. We gotta work with what we got. We gotta work with what we got. He's definitely he a big. Um, I don't think he's absolutely gonna harm your list by putting him in there, but I don't think he's gonna help it much either. Yeah, I mean, even Chief Librarian Tigris, who's a first, 
Did Tim Rose get a Primaris version? Yes. 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 He can join Blade Guard. He couldn't previously in the index, but now he can. Tiros is quite good. I know he's not. We're not talking about him here, but he's quite good. Yeah, it just it seems strange that the Ultramarine Psyker can join Blade Guard, but he's not even really that much of a combat character. But our big combat character cannot join Blade Guard. Marnius Cogger, of course, why he's got the ability because he's not going to make him an insane melee unit. But either way, that's just yeah. logic. Effectively, so, he's an upgraded Judicia. At the so moment. is he? Uh, is he, he a low C? I think I'd run him over the Ancient. Yeah, he's a C. Yeah, okay. Uh, sad times to be a Blood Angels fan. Let's move on to Company Heroes. It really is. You're not wrong. Which are next, apparently. Not Desolation really? Not Reigns. Yes. Yeah, I think okay. those guys got themselves... They, they, they got overexcited. They wanted to get... <laughs> yes. We're looking at Company Heroes next. So Company Heroes are... What are they for? That's all I'm going to say. What um, is their purpose? Because I cannot figure it out. They're a bit of a mishmash, aren't they? The Their purpose is that they have three wounds. Oh, four wounds now, sorry. That's what their purpose is. they got four the, wounds in their OC2. Their purpose is really good with characters that we can't take. Really? Because all yeah. they look like to me is a lot of ablative armour. They have a lot of ablative armour, you're right. And they have a bit of a mishmash of weapons, you're also right. Because right, they're not very good in combat. They're not very good at shooting. Anything like the captain you'd put them with, you really want to put his buff and his mela in his um, CP usage thing on a squad that's going to benefit from it. What are they for? They're just, they're just, they're for just armor for a character. with a bit of punch. Not that much punch. Like I said, but, a bit of punch. I think they might, I think they're good, man, because they're four wounds per model mark. Uh, sorry, and they're minus one to wound if they're led by a character. Wow. Yep. And they're two OC each while the banner bear is alive. Yeah, well. and they're two OC each. So with the character in, it's 12 OC. So you've got 12 OC, you've got like 20 wounds because there's five of them. No, so four if, of them, if, sorry. If you've got a, car a captain that you want to bring, these are a good bodyguard for him. But you've got to have a captain that you want to bring. Yeah, so Tycho. I, I want to bring Tycho. I want to bring Tycho. You can't, though. <laughs> I know, I know. So, so you've saying, got a unit that can make a captain hard to kill. Yeah, which would be perfect for Commander Tycho or no, Captain Tycho. Because Tycho, you want all of his buffs to affect the unit that he's with, which is like stick Tycho in Death Company, stick Tycho in Assault Incessor, stick Tycho in a unit that does some melee damage. Don't waste all of his buffs on a unit that doesn't do any melee damage. Okay. All right, so theoretically... The reason why he can be good in some situations, if you look at Salamanders and Vulcan Heston, his yeah. buffs in your shooting phase, so it's an enemy unit within 24 inches, and every time a friendly unit shoots them, they get re-roll wounds with Torrents and Melters, which is great. And start a battle, you select an objective marker, and you get an OC 10 against that objective marker, which is great. None of the buffs that Vulcan gives are conditional to the unit that he's with. They buff the rest of the army anyway. So you can either put 110 points for 16 ablative wounds next to him with a load of AC, which would be pretty good for Vulcan. Yeah. yeah. Salamanders. It's just shit for Blood Angels. So they're literally ablative wounds for Vulcan. Maybe not just Vulcan. I'll pull that, uh, I, I, pull that No, but I, can't, I genuinely can't think of anything up because all the captains and that have buffs that affect their own unit. So you want to put it in a unit that's going to benefit from that buff. I don't, I don't look into other chapters in too much detail. Maybe no. neither. I should do, but I don't, because I don't care that much. So, what's the point? It's just I've got to make my captain that I'm. Why Plus, the banner bearer is really pretty good. What's he for? The, the way the banner wraps clearly goes That's down into the cloak yeah, really, wrap around him. It, stuff. It's really, really pretty model. Um, I just you bring a captain. Yeah, we already talked about the captain on this on this um, earlier on, and we said, right, if you're going to bring the captain, you're going to bring him to stick with your blade guard because you want to buff up your blade guard. Yeah, but okay. I'm trying to think, is there, is there some sort of um, really good enhancement that you want to just have a captain standing around doing bugger all with just to have the... No, I can't think of anything. The only thing that angels as it stands right now, I, just, I agree with you. He's, he, he, like, for example, if you could run him with Seth, which was an option before they removed the things, then he would be 20 ablative wounds or 16 ablative wounds for Seth. Seth's a monster in melee... Yeah but he's toughness four and he's just going to die normally. So, yes, I guess if they could attach to 
the captains which the by all manner should attach to then i think he's okay because like if Tycho lives all five turns man and he was able to shoot that metal gun all five turns i think he would be great but the, but the point is he's playing the... what 200 and odd points for a melter gun that shoots every turn well, they, they can't join Tarko. and they can't join seth and they can't yeah. join anything uh, useful. anything useful to a blood angels army so are they actually d tier for us i think so i yeah. just cannot see why you bring them you're bringing armor for something that you're not going to bring the okay, downside well, of all this means is if tomorrow GW do come out and amend the index Blood Angels with all the credits with the, all the keyword oh. changes that we're bitching about, then I, this might be a little I, bit. Out unless of they give us a, a Vulcan equivalent that can cast magic spells on units that he's not with, I can't see how anything they do to allow them to attach to would benefit us enough to want to bring it. It's like you know, Seth, for example. Let's say Seth could join them, right? Uh -huh. And he's quite powerful in melee, and he brings some relatively relative bonuses to his unit in melee. We'll stick him in a melee unit then. Stick him in blade guard. And yeah, I mean, I guess. Pins, true. Or stick him in assault intercessors and save yourself some points and have a ridiculous amount of attacks and still loads of. Nobody, nobody's wins. arguing with you, Tony. Yeah, I think the only reason yeah. that he would be they would be good for the ninety-five points that they cost is because they're wounds four and OC two, so it would be it would be cheap ablative wounds with OC two. That's it. That's it. Yeah, they're great. If the thing you're joining them to is wants wants to be with them, yeah. But for Blood Angels, there isn't anything. If if they can attach to some like ultra cheap character, maybe. So they, yeah. then you've got a unit that's ninety five points and is a bit of a bugger to shift off of a. Well, they, can, they can only join a captain. They can only join a captain. And yeah, they have. Expensive. Or a chapter master, and obviously Dante can't lead them because. Is there is there a shooting captain that's worth bringing? Probably. No, I mean, but not not one that we have access to. Not that we have access to. No, I don't think there might there is one. Full stop. Actually, first I would I would okay. honestly run him with Ty I would run them with Tycho if I was allowed to do that. Uh -huh. I think that would be cool. I think that would be pretty strong as well because I could just have Tycho move on to an objective, hit things with their rapid fire melter guns, and then use all Tycho's attacks. And there is one guy in that in that unit with a sword. Yep. So. I think that the Tycho plus that plus the durability of them plus their OC would be pretty much a pain for, for my units to deal with. It's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah. But because we can't attach Tycho to them, then my company heroes are very much still in the Leviathan box, unbuilt. Indeed. Next. The, they're, are they in the Leviathan? They're not in the, they're Leviathan, not in the Leviathan box. box. No, I didn't even get company heroes. God damn it. No. no. Was oh. garden, mate. You had to buy them separately. Oh, I got well, shafted. I, them, yeah. I thought I had them. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> right, Death Company. Intercessors first. Uh, they have the same reroll hits in OC0 and no fall backness that's standard with Death Company. Once per turn, they can either use Fire, Overwatch, or Heroic Intervention for 0 CP. I don't think there's a lot of value in that. No. Um, well, I guess fine. if it's if you did run a 10-man squad with bolt rifles and you're re-rolling you're probably going to make like five hits on overwatch maybe slightly more maybe six or something but it's only a bolt rifle minus yeah. one ap one damage it's quite a laugh having what is now effectively a shooting unit yeah i mean they don't make a lot of sense death company i mean they can be armed with um chainsaws chainsaws and bolt pistols right yeah at which point they put out a huge volume of attacks and they re-roll hits which is fine it's just doesn't have any punch but you could put them with a chaplain it gives them a bit more punch and makes them able to have some oc and fall back which is nice and and just... can they join can the chaplain join them yes yes chaplain yes yes Cha the chaplain is the only unit that can join because them. the chaplain hasn't had its name changed in any way shape or form the chaplain is still the chaplain there yeah i didn't know chaplain. if they used to say they're during the prime Aris chaplain or something no, 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 no. Chaplain's fine. so that's it that's 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 literally the only option um i don't run them I don't really see much yeah. scope in running them. Uh, they are 85 points for 5, 170 for 10. I used to run them in ninth because you could make them not 6 up, but 5 up feel no pain and give them transhuman for being 4 up to wound, at which point they'd be fairly resilient. So the same points as jump intercessors. Switch do mortal wounds when they charge and obviously have a 12 inch move. And The have... abilities that they've got, Black Rage is alright, Visions of Heresy is fairly useless. So Yeah. Given that you're paying points for that, they're not an optimal choice. I have never considered running them in a 10th ed list. I think they're crap. I think they're C. 
You disagree, yeah. anyone? No, they do function. They just their function is not one that we particularly need. Yeah, they're not dumpster. They're not utterly useless. But okay, um, let's just move straight into Death Company Marines then. Hey, uh, slightly better because they can have weapons worth stab. So they can obviously have lots of different weapon options. Uh, any number of models can replace their bolt gun with chainsaws and bolt pistols or thunder hammers. Any number of models can have their bolt pistol replaced with infernal pistols, plasma pistols, hand flamers. Any number of models can have their chainsaws replaced with power fists and power weapons. So you can have much better weapon options. When the unit is less than starting strength, it's sustained one. When it's more than half, it's sustained two. So their damage output is arguably the best damage output of Death Company. They're yes. just on foot. So if they're on the, foot... These then... are the most powerful melee punching foot units in this tier list. Yes. Uh, and arguably they're the most powerful melee punching units in all the Blood Angels Codex, actually. Jump, jump pack ones. Well, well these, mean, these hit slightly harder than the jump pack ones. Yeah, these ones hit harder. They're just slower. So the way that you could... And I think there is only one way you could do it would be you would attach Tycho the Lost to them to give them advance and charge. So if you're going to do it, you could attach Tycho the Lost again... Again, then you're putting them in a rhino, and then you're paying for the rhino, and you're paying for Tiger Loss, and you're paying for 10 guys, and then you're up at 400 points, and are they worth 400 points is the question. Or with a normal chaplain instead of Tycho. Could you well, put them with a chaplain and then just bosh them in a Land Raider Crusader or something? Yeah, you could yeah, yeah, yeah. That would probably be the better option, because the problem with using Tycho the Lost is Tycho the Lost doesn't prevent them having no C and fall back, because he's not charging. Exactly, yeah. and if you're charging a big munching unit of melee death machines onto an objective, or an enemy unit, then you want to be able to actually have some OC on that objective when yeah. you're killing what's on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, biggest... that's quite a big hit. That's a, that's a hard-hitting unit. It's about as hard-hitting as units you're going to get at the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, give them all power fists and inferno pistols. They will hop out the land raider, take a pot shot, and charge. And they'll be a plus one to wound from the chaplain. And they're re-rolling all their hits. So I'm going to make you uh, a suggestion that they go into B. And the reason I would put them into B is because, having played a ton of Death Company with jump packs in 10th edition, what I find is, even though I only take five guys, 90% of the time is the second those five guys jump out of cover, make a charge, kill some units, the opponent then mops the entire squad up. And yep. the opponents know how deadly Death Company are. They're literally oh, yeah. the black guys on the, the, the battlefield with all the power fists. So the second they're not in cover, they just get instantly removed. It doesn't matter how, you know, the opponent will always shoot those Death Company first. They are their biggest threat. Yeah. So they're not I would resilient them in any way. The, yeah. name is, the, the clue is in the name, Death Company. They are, are given the black armor to go out there and die gloriously in battle. That is it. So, so if you're going to pay all these points to give them the chaplain, to run 10 of them, to put them in a land raider, you're going to get one turn of fighting, and then the opponent's going to wipe the whole squad. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I wouldn't say they're great. I'd say they're... You know, it's... Because... It's, but when you spend those 400 points, so it's the same amount of points you'd have to spend for Angron. Angron can stand in the middle. He's toughness 10. He's got 4-up invan, 17-odd wounds. He can stand there and weather a turn of shooting. Yeah. Blood Angels cannot stand and weather a turn of shooting. So the whole squad will be dead. And then I guess my question is, is that for that one turn of combat that they got to do, is that worth 400 points? Arguably, probably not. Okay. So I'd put it B. I think they're, they're, they're definitely our hardest-hitting unit. But I do think that you're right. I don't think that I don't. I'm not running them. Are you putting them higher or lower than Blade Guard? I'll put them top B. Uh, Ultimately, their killing power is better. Yeah, that sure. they are a credible threat to if you've almost got something anything. That you really need to remove, and you want to do it with melee, then they're your best choice. And if you play on a map where they can get something like that, and you can get them into cover or whatever, then sure. Um, yeah, very situational, but I agree. Yes, their only downside okay. is that they don't have jump packs, and we do have a jump pack option instead. Um, yeah, and they are slowly jump packs rather yeah. than paying for transport. So, all right, let's yeah. talk about Desolation Marines next. So, Desolation Marines came out. Uh, everybody gets basically a crack missile. Everybody gets a strength four indirect D three shots. Did you buy uh, thirty at the end, John? I bought fifteen. Okay. Uh, I made 10 and 5 are still in sprue. Uh, <laughs> if they stay still, they can ignore cover. Um, which, is, which is really good. But you can only take them in squads of 5. And they're 40 points on a model now. They're 200 points for 5. So 200 points 
for five crack missiles, or super crack missiles, sorry, and ar arguably like 10 indirect strength four shots. So I guess, is that too, is that worth 200 points to me? It feels like it is certainly not. They, they uh, are inarguably really good, which is why they've been nerfed as hard as they have been. Yeah. Both of their points I think this is going to be size. Um, they used to be auto take. Following the nerf to their points and their squad size, you now almost never see them on a board. Yeah, I think um, they've just gone a bit far with them. Yeah, I they've gone way agree. too far. They've gone if way they too far. If they were 160 far. points, 170 points, then I think we would still be seeing them quite a lot. But 200 either points. The, yeah, um, either the points nerf or the squad size nerf, not not both, would have made them reasonable. I feel. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I think the thing that made them broken was the lethal hits apothecary. Um, yeah. Which you can still do, but now just costs a ton more points. It'll only benefit five of them at the time. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I I'd run them in an Imperial Fists army. I think but... their points cost, though. I think they're honestly dumpster. They're just too expensive. They're they're only they're you know we can play in Sangre Guard are too expensive at like thirty five points per model. These guys are forty, and they're they're even less survivable in Sangre Guard. I would love to disagree with you, but I can't. I think they're the lowest thing that we've looked at. What would you use for the lowest thing we've looked sit at? Back they, and sit on objective and shoot stuff. They do function. It's just they're too many points for what their function is now. But if you're just going to sit them in a backfield objective obscured, you'd just be better taking a whirlwind now. The whirlwind's cheaper. It's got more strength. It's got more EP. Yep. It's got more shots, probably, or similar. Or shots. take a single load up objective or whatever or a yeah. Load unit. Yeah. But their um the damage output is still is not bad, um but they yeah. are. They put out a load of blast shots yeah. against hordes. I don't think they're completely worst thing in the in the tie codex. You know, Corbulo is worse. Um, okay. It doesn't work. Um, so they're here, I better than Corbulo. No, I put them in C. I'll they serve a the purpose. Thing. They do shoot stuff. They can kill stuff. Yeah, they're just really That's inefficient at doing so now. Yeah, they they still work. They're just too many points for what they deliver. Okay. Um... Let's move straight into Devastator squads. Okay. Uh, Devastator squads used to be very strong when they would take like a bunch of multi melters. We obviously know multi melters have been nerfed badly. So you'd be looking at crack missiles, which again are only strength nine. So realistically, then you're on Lars cannons. So maybe four guys with Lars cannons could be a potential. Grav cannons have that anti vehicle two up. So that could also yeah. be a potential. You can mix those. Uh, if you remain stationary, you ignore cover once per battle. You can change a roll to an unmodified six for free using the Sherub. So I guess the question is, are Devastators maybe running Las Cannons or Grav Cannons worth it? Uh, at Devastators at the moment are 120 points for five or 200 for ten. They will expose themselves, they will yep. shoot, and they will die. Correct. Just like that. Um, really. I so you get one turn of shooting out of them with reasonable power. For pe people what, used to use points. them in drop pods. Yep. Yeah. I, but, I don't think I would, but 120 points, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. 120 points for four last cannon shots. Yep. Um, you might as well pop their um, ability because... They're going to die since somebody yeah. tries to shoot them back. I was going to say, if you could put them on a really high piece of terrain in your deployment zone and cover the whole battlefield for the whole game with 48 inches last cannons, they stay still, so they're heavy. They ignore cover because they stayed still. Uh, they're plunging fire because they're up high. Then I guess I don't think that's the worst thing in the world for 120 points. Um, yeah. Just trying you to you think. You say melters are nerfed into oblivion. They're AP4, which is not nothing. Uh huh. But most of the time, against armor now or monsters, you'll wound on fives with melters, yeah, which means yeah, if you if whereas you don't grav have... cannons will wound on twos, but at AP yeah. one, they're not going to get through the AP. Mm. So yeah. I think I think last cannons and sitting back as big old sniper unit, and if they get picked up, well then great, least it shoot something more valuable. Yeah, one hundred and twenty points, quite a lot of damage output. If you yeah, can get I mean, some nice line of sight blocking terrain, so they can't be focus fired or something. Yeah, they essentially guarantee they'll be in cover one way or the other. Yeah. yeah, so you've got them in cover, you've got them 40 inches away, you've got them standing still, you've got them plunging fire, 
I mean, maybe there's something to be said about that. Uh, I would say that that's maybe a pi B. Is it an A? No. No, you don't. Not way. Hope it helps. Is it a B? Uh, Not really. No. If it is, it's the bottom, isn't it? Because. They're still 120. They are going to die as soon as somebody farts yeah. in the general direction. They're not going to get a save better than the three up. Correct. And they're toughness four, two moves each. If you're the only thing is they can out, out, I mean, the only thing is you can outrange people because you've got 48 inches there. They're, you're yeah. also predicating everything you're doing on not moving for making the most out of their hit rolls and mm. their ability for ignores cover. And the moment you have that restriction where they can't move, why are you even bothering taking them? I'm just trying to trying to play devil's advocate. Yeah, the, no, the, the, I mean, the, we slagged off in our tier list for the different um, imperial fists. Yeah, yeah. The 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 detachments. We were saying, oh, you need to move to win games. Now it's not quite as bad as that because it's one unit, and you're saying, well, as 120 points worth. I mean, it's one unit that's going to lock down that road down there. With anybody goes in there, it's going to eat four last cannons. Yeah, for 120 points, I think it could be worth it. Because yeah, you know, balls are quite terrain heavy. Um, I mean, the ballista dreadnoughts one forty, and it's got two las cannons and two crap missiles and storm bolters and can tank shock and can move eight inches yeah. and doesn't have the to stay still. Comparable points for four las cannon shots. Yeah, so so probably it's crap. I'd, I'd you'd probably, it you'd take a predator over it. When you also predator and I later, what hundred and forty points? Fifteen hundred twenty. Say it. You'd always take that over, wouldn't you? It's basically the same. Um, I know the Predator Destructor is 135. Uh, There's always been an expected Two of the Predator Annihilators has cannons on. No, no, oh, the, it's three shots was, rather than four. But I was going to say, the Predator Annihilator is exactly the same, 120. You would take the yeah. Predator Annihilator every time, wouldn't you? So this guy's crap? Yeah, I'll put me crap. Yeah, better, than, better than Desolation oh, Range, though. I think they're better than the, um, the, the Death Company. with. Yeah, they're yeah. better than this Ancient as well, surely. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's fair. That's a good position. Yeah, I think I, I mean, it's, worse they deserve it. a better one, but it's about right for them. Okay, next up, Gabriel Seth. And this is, I really actually want to run Gabriel Seth in my list, and I'll tell you why, is because none of the other named Blood Angels characters are cool or good this edition, and Gabriel <laughs> Seth has a three well, damage. Has a he's three damage. Cool or good. Well, he's got a three damage. He's the only Blood Angels character with a three damage weapon, and he's got sustained hits one, and he's got bonus attacks for every model, five models within six. Yeah. Um, he can also advance and charge when he leads a unit. Oh my so god, if he, he could... can join one unit. He can only join tacticals! <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's... he's never been cool. Oh, he's a little for rage boy. Fuck's sake, Games Workshop. He can Face join this. one unit and it's tax and they're rubbish. Salt right. squads don't exist anymore. Command squads don't exist anymore. Vanguard veterans on the foot don't exist anymore. He can join a tactical squad. Yeah, so if he could join... That's if you if you I feel like if you could join Company Heroes, I would try him. I, I feel if you could join Assault Intercessors, I'd try him. Okay. Yeah. Blitz the or Blade Guard and just blitz things. Um. Oh, but right now he is unfortunately just another Blood Angels joke. Hey, maybe he'll be going Primaris. I think. Um, is he worse than Tycho? Yes. Uh... Given the fact he can only join tactical squad, yeah, he's sadly worse than Tycho. But I mean, Tycho joins the same. Can I just ask a really dumb question? Why does the picture oh. of the company heroes go five models? Oh, because there's a captain. Because the box that you buy oh, includes right. a captain that it comes with. Okay, rubbish. Um, all right, so so Seth, because he can't, he's not a joke because he's crap. No, no he's in and of himself. He's quite good. But he's As a joke say, because he, he can't join anything. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, I think Tycho's better than this other stuff. He just needs <laughs> to be able to join stuff as well. Okay. Right, okay. Uh, Hellblasters next. And Hellblasters are somewhat he's... interesting now. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd take Because they've got assault good. and heavy on their weapons, which yeah. is kind of nice. Uh, heavy, of, sorry, assault is just comes in clutch sometimes when you need to perform objectives at the end of the game. Yep. Heavy is nice if you decide to remain stationary. Yep. Um, there's many ways you can get sustained hits and stuff and lethal hits on Hellblasters now, which can make Hellblasters very, very good. Yep. Um, you can bow in an impulsor, which can then move. They can get out and shoot things. 
Yeah, yeah and they could also shoot, shoot the from the, the firing deck of the Impulsor. And when one of them dies on a three up, you do not remove the model from play. The destroyed model can shoot again. So yeah. basically, when you fail your hazardous yeah. tests, uh, you can sometimes shoot again. And then if you attach that medic that we talked about earlier, the medic that's here in B, he could yep. shoot and then revive the guy that killed himself with the hazardous roll. Yeah. Um, and, and in terms of firepower, fun. they're pretty solid. Sorry, yeah. Tony? Can we still put bolt discipline on? We can, can't we? Yes, yes, yeah, you can. can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, fire discipline. Fire, fire discipline. 125 points for 5, 250 points for 10. I don't know if I feel like 10, but I think for 5, if you've got 125 I points. I think other chapters can run 10 better than we can. Other chapters can run these better than we can. But if you yes. want this, for 125 points, they've got fairly withering amount of fire. They've got decent AP, which is rare in this day and age. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... Do I think that I would run these over Devastators? Yes, I would, because they can move and still do damage. Yep. They probably don't do quite as much damage, five of these and four last they'll, they'll die just as readily as Devastators. Yeah, They'll die just as readily as Devastators. Um, but the fact that they can move at least means you can get them to cover. Yeah. Yep. Um, and not really take any hits to... Um, I think they're okay. I think they can be pretty good if you're building around that. I'd so put I think, them between the Death Company and the Captain in B. I feel like we should put them into A because I think they can be really good. How would you, you make them really good in Blood Angels, John? Well, I think it'd probably be difficult to make them really good in Blood Angels, but you would probably give them uh, like a librarian or something with fire discipline or a lieutenant with fire discipline so the lieutenant with fire discipline would give them lethal hits which means every six is an auto wound and then you could also give them the fire discipline so basically in devastator doctrine fives and sixes would be auto wounds and sustained so if you think if you had a 10 man score to these guys that's 20 shots every five and six is an auto wound and a burst so you're going to get maybe what like six or seven auto wounds and a burst then you shoot your oath of moment target, so you reroll everything, so you get another like four or five sixes, so you get ten auto wounds, ten yep. additional bursts, and then your wound roll is potentially not too bad anyway because you're strengthy uh, overcharging. Minus three and two damage. Yeah. Yeah. So I th I think these guys could kick out a bunch of Isn't firepower. Do what? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, and no, I was agreeing with you. Uh, and then obviously a few of them will die, so hopefully you roll some three pluses and they can shoot again, right? Um, yep. So potentially, I think these guys will. If you think about elite infantry, like let's say like uh, Death Shroud or like, yeah, Death Shroud would be a good example, aren't they? Like toughness seven now uh -huh. for the Death Guard. These guys overcharged plasmas would be perfect yep. for killing these guys, and you would get weight of fire, and you would put them on the invulnerable save, and it would just be so many shots that they're going to fail some. So I think these guys can be good. You are passionate about putting this company something. to B because after they've attacked, they <laughs> die. Mm -hmm. And Hellblasters are like the shooting version of Death Company. They'll put out a lot of firepower and then they'll die. Uh, or there is some I'll put out firepower. Yeah, I was going to say there are some well. quirks there in that you could have them next to a repulsor, so if they're charged, you could jump them back inside the repulsor. That is a that is a free thing that you can you do. If could, you but why would you worry about charging when you've got a unit of toughness four, two room, three at power save? You no, can, if you're charged, I'm saying, That's if I mean, you're I'm, charged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your defensive profile is such that you could just get shot off. Well, sure, but you might be playing a melee army that comes yeah, in after okay. for your charge. Uh, yeah, I mean, the only advantage of these guys would be they're 24 inches away. So arguably, at 24 okay. inches, you could shoot the target that's most deadly to you with all that sustained nonsense. That's and then a bit of range. That's definitely useful. Yep. You're absolutely right. They could hide. I, I think that Hellblasters are probably the best thing that we're looking at and you will see them in competitive lists like i was just at a gt where there was a guy running the squad of 10 hellblasters yeah but he was running with dark angels he was <laughs> yes which they're even better in but i still yeah. think they're good in blood angels okay all right yeah if you're yeah, right you know, much more competitive practical experience than either of us i think so, you'd have uh, to you'd have to attach the both agree you have to use the lethal hits and then you would also have to use uh oath of the moment oath of the moment yeah. and, and and then i think they're pretty you decent. mean Lieutenant and Lethal Hits? Yeah. Is but, that not what I said? Sorry. Yeah. You said Apothecary. It's fine. Oh, Don't sorry. Worry. Yeah, I meant Lieutenant. I'm with Mark in some ways. They are the shooting equivalent of Death Company. They they kill a thing and then they all die. 
and it's whether right. they're filling the thing is worth the points. And the fact they can is. do so from twenty four inches is a point in their favour. I will yeah. I will concede that quite happily. And yeah, because uh, you could you put them in reserve. Okay. You could put put them in reserve, bring them in. You don't need to get within half range or any nonsense like that. Yeah, I think they're better than the chaplain. To be honest. Okay. Well, the chaplain taking the chaplain is contingent on what he can join. The hell blasters. Yeah, so we said at the beginning the chaplain is the absolute yeah. bottom of A. Yeah, I think if you don't want to run yeah. aggressors, but you want to run fire discipline, I think this is the next best squad for it. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, next up, um, this is. Let me see what this was supposed to be in furnace marines here. Yeah, the new flamer marines for the the Leviathan box set. I don't know how you use them outside of the firestorm detachment, honestly. You use they them are so in cool. boarding actions. Use them at in which boarding point actions. they're great. Yeah. They are so okay. cool, but they are just not actually that good. When you do the maths on how much damage they put out, even because they've got follow, follow what shenanigans and all this sort of stuff, then you actually maths it out and you're like, yeah, but they haven't done that much damage for their points cost. Yeah. I think they probably needed a point of AP to be good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're like, they're like hell blasters. They do the shooting, except their shooting is shorter ranged. More voluminous, but less powerful. Can anything join them? Can they be joined by any characters? Yeah, yeah a few things. Who can join them, sorry? The Apothecary can join them. If you really wanted to. Yeah. What, okay. what benefit would the Apothecary If only have? I'd made a huge matrix where I listed out what can join every squad in the game. But... If only I had eyes and remembered to look at the computer monitor <laughs> when you sent me Discord messages. Fair enough. All right. So, uh, the furnace can be joined by a captain, a lieutenant, a librarian, a chaplain, or a apothecary, or an ancient, or a judicia. Is any of those good for it though? Like none of it buffs the shooting, and it's a shooting flamery unit that needs AP. Lieutenant does because like. uh, oh, no, they don't roll to hit, so much. lieutenant's useless. Uh, not really then. No. Well, the um, you can make them slightly more survivable if you stick a librarian in there. Yeah. Well, the okay. captain's the extra strat of some thing. If, I don't if, know. if you're playing the Firestorm one, which gives them a bit more punch, then they can be okay. And if you're playing them as Sally's, you can make them really good. But um, I don't think they're particularly good. I want to run 10 of them in a drop pod for a laugh. But I don't expect them to be competitive. But I don't expect them to be competitive. I just think it'd be funny to have a big flamethrower bomb. Okay. That is um, basically how I feel about this unit as well. So they're crap? For 40k? Yeah. yeah, I have to agree. They're crap. Okay. I don't you know think what? they're bad as some of the other stuff, though. I think they're their, their main use is an Overwatch threat, frankly. Yeah. Do you know I what? I just probably better than the Intercessors, but not as good as the Devastators. And nowhere near as good as Aggressors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely not. You, sorry, can, just one final point on hellblasters before we move on because i just remembered <laughs> okay. when you talked about that if you gave the hellblasters 10 of them a librarian to give yep. them a four up in yeah and gave the librarian fire discipline you would give right. up lethal hits but you'd have yep. a four up in on 10 hellblasters and then they'd that all might... die when they killed themselves shooting something but Therefore, you still but you... would be wasted as, as long as you shoot your with the moment target <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, maybe. Maybe, no, maybe you're right. doesn't buff in any way, shape, or form. The, Your hazard uh, rules, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Next up, then, is Sorry. regular <laughs> intercessor squads. And I like a five man squad of intercessors because they can do sticky objectives. Yes. And that's about I all agree. I have to say about them. They're, They're cheap. They're durable for their points. And they have sticky objectives. Nothing yeah. they do is useless. They're not excessively resilient. They're not excessively killy. They're just nice. So, um, yeah, I'd put them in. Basically, B my game plan way. in the GT I was just at was put them on my home field objective, teleport them to some side field objective every turn. You know, like any turn that I'm not using my teleport to do damage, I'm just teleporting these guys to sticky something else. By teleport, you mean Librarian Dreadnought? Librarian Dreadnought teleport them already, okay. I guess. So yep. basically, as the game starts, my home field one is sticky, and then I can sticky something somewhere else on the board. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And for like 85 points, I think they cost, I think that was fine. Uh, I don't know if we see them in every list, so I think they're a B or an A. They're B. I'm oh, they're really B. sure they're solid B. Oh, they're a solid B. Uh, Probably... Next other intercessors, the salt ones? They're better than the other intercessors. Uh, no, I'd put them below, just due to the sheer... Um... 
the utility is great. The lack of killing power for me ranks them below. Yeah, see, I rated them the other way. I because I had point, but it's it's uh, potato p- potato. Yeah. Those yeah. those I, two yeah, are like completely agree that It's just slightly less killing power for slightly more utility. Yeah, it depends on how you rate the utility. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, let's look at the Judiciar next. He obviously makes the unit fight first. Um, Any time he destroys a character model in battle, he adds one to the ta- characteristic of a sword until the end of the game, which realistically is going to happen like once, maybe if you're lucky. He gets five attacks, weapon skill two up, strength seven, minus two to damage. He is devastating wounds and precision. So if he did charge an enemy, you would be able to try and precision out a character and then for the rest of the game get one extra attack with your sword. He only has an invun save in melee. And the main reason I think to take him would be to fight first. He attaches to assault intercessors, blade guards, and furnace intercessors, stern guard, tacticals. I think you see him attached to blade guards, and that's yeah. about it. And as we said before, fight first is mainly a defensive ability now for it to be used when you get charged by somebody else. Yep, that is still of value though, because yeah, then, like we say, if you clear if you clear something off from objective with your blade guard, then you can make it hard to charge them back off again. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's a lot of points for what he's bringing now, I feel. Less points than Mephisto, and he basically brings the same stuff. He's, he's, he's basically Mephisto, not quite as good as Just Mephisto less punchy, is. yeah. But not that much less punchy, right? And not that much less punchy. Because 40 he's... points less punchy? Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, I think that if I was going to do it, I would honestly run him over Mephisto, though. Because I think Mephiston's overcosted for what you're getting. We we did put Mephiston in the crap here. Like 40 points to better use. The, exactly, yeah. So I think if I was for... going to okay. run Blade Guard, I would yeah. put him next to Blade Guard, honestly. Like, he's as good as the Blade Guard. He makes them a little bit more killy. He makes them a little bit harder to charge into. He's not too, he's not too I, expensive I like Mephiston. I think of worse things to do than putting two units of three Blade Guard plus a Judicia each into a Land Raider, driving up the field, dis- disembarking them both, and putting both squads on objectives, saying, come and have a go. Yeah, okay. yeah. ideally in cover as well, so they can't be yeah. shot. Then I think he's for- worse than Blade Guard, but I think he's better than the Assault. So I'll put him between the uh, Intercessor and the Blade Guard. Perfect. Because I think often you might run your Blade Guard with, without him, you'd run it with the yeah. Chaplain You're instead. You don't build your army around him, necessarily, yeah. but he's, he's not bad. You could put the Blade Guard, you put the Chaplain in there or the Captain in there to make him a bit more killy, or you put him in there to make him a bit more tough. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, a librarian, I was going to say a firstborn librarian. No, he's just the Primaris librarian. He's just, he's just librarian. called the librarian now. He there has... There is no firstborn, there is no Primaris, there is just Zool. Sorry, the librarian. Yep, uh, he gets a feel no pin four up against psychic attacks. While he's leading a unit, that unit has a four up in van. He has a reasonably okay smite if it you overcharge it. It's strength six minus two d three damage d six shots, so it can be somewhat okay if you get a good number on that d six. Uh, he also has a strength six minus one d three damage sword, so nothing to write home about with a sword. Yeah. Um, I guess you take him for the four up in van he gives to a unit. Yeah. It you is connect. worth noting as well that the dictionary, uh, sorry, the rulebook definition of um, the psychic hood for Fort Field No Pain Against Psychic Attacks says that a psychic attack uh, damage dealt by such is any damage dealt by an attack that has a psychic keyword. So if he fails a hazardous roll on his smite and does himself damage from that, that is done by an attack with a psychic keyword so he can use his own Field No Pain against the hazardous damage he takes from his own smite. Yep. Um... We don't see him get too much play. Adding a four-up invulnerable save to all of the things you could add him to, it's just not that great, really. How many points is he? 65. Uh, 65 points to put a four-up save on your Hellblasters. I think that's the reason to or do it. Or a squad of a 10 assault intercessors, if you're not or putting a the squad of 10 assault intercessors or whatever. It's not bad. For 65 points. I was going to say, if you could it's attach... probably not your first choice, though. The, the, yeah, the problem is, he's not like the chapter master. If you attach him, you can't attach anyone else. Yeah. Or, you know, like, he limits you. So you couldn't, like, do him plus a priest or something. It's just like, you just have him. So I don't know what you attach him to that makes them... It's it's the Hellblasters. That's your only play. I think Tony's yeah. right. 
when you when you put in a model like this on to out of four up in vulnerable save, you're generally wanting to put it on something that is pretty resilient in the first place, and nothing here is resilient in the first place. I think. Can you touch me? Devastators. If you want yep. a big unit, devastators. Stick the. So you run the big unit. You stick yep. him in it as well, and then those four last cannons are going to be firing for a lot longer. There, yeah, that's your that's your play. Yeah, that's your play. Yeah, is that worth it? That would be 185 points. Where's devastators? We put them in. Well, that wouldn't be because you want to run the big unit See? devastators. So it'll be 200 and something. Oh. Yeah, 200 points for 10 devastators. Well, a couple of tanks and thanks, mate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or sticking with the hell blasters to make them slightly more. Stick them in 10, 10 hell blasters with him, four up in one save. You put the fire discipline or whatever on him as well. Uh, I'd, I'd like, like John was saying, I'd rather run them with a lieutenant or maybe an apothecary to get them back. Yeah, the, the only advantage would be that if you were running against like Thousand Sons or something, that would give your Hellblasters a four up feeling of being against Psychic. So there is that. I mean, like he's a B, maybe? No, I don't think so. Do you think he's his lowest? If he's C, he's going to be higher than Mephisto. So. No, I, th I think he's B because I think he's, he's in a lot of ways, he's Mephisto plus for what you're actually using him for. He's, you're much more likely to take him over Mephisto, I think. He's only 65 points. Yeah, yeah it's a fair point. I, 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 keep, I suppose I'm overlooking the, the dirt cheapness of these points more than anything else. 65 yeah. points to give a four-up inbound to a squad. Yeah. So use that squad correctly. I just, it's not bad. I just don't want to give four-up inbound to any of the squads here. I'd well, your choices give, are help us the assault the, and assessors, probably. Offensive abilities from other things. True, true. But hey, that's that's how he's getting play at a top level right now. So okay, fair enough. So that's it. Um, next up, we just have a lieutenant, and the one that I've got pictured here is Lieutenant Tomer on. But there's about a million options for lieutenants yeah. now. No, right, um, left. This is not in Phobos. This is not in Reaver armor. This is not the lone up one with combi weapon because he's a Phobos one as well. This is just the lieutenant, uh, and he's got good abilities. He obviously has lethal hits on the unit that he's leading, and uh, shoot and declare a charge in the turn which it fell back. He's so, also flat 65 points and has got a ton of loadout options. Yeah, he can join Blade Guard, uh, he can join Hellblasters, join all sorts of stuff. And and like I said, if you're going to run him with Hellblasters, then that's the best way to get those lethal hits out on them, probably. So I think he's possibly an A, honestly. Stacking lethal hits with sustained is very good option, yeah. He's absolutely a caddy for that. With whoever you put him to, you could put him with intercessors for the volume of shots that they could put out, which isn't amazing, but it's better than nothing. You could put him with assault intercessors for the volume of attacks that they make, which is a lot more. It is a lot more. Um, his buffs are generally quite useful. I think he's really quite good, but I'll tell you what's interesting is I think he's really quite good, but I don't think I've ever seen anybody use him. I've seen him used with the Hell Blasters. Yeah. He's just not seeing a lot of play, and I, I wonder if high B then. Yeah, I think so. I think he's good in in a lot of ways. He's probably better than the chaplain. He's he's far more. I think. Unit. I think once again, he's limited by what he can join. You're not going to take him as a unit on his own. No. Strengths of what he can join that will dictate how useful he is. But other than the, here's a play for uh, you. Here's a, I've, I've got a play for join. you. Everything benefits from him. Every single unit. So unlike the chaplain, which benefits melee units, he benefits every unit he joins. Yeah. The play I here, right? You think he's an A? Yeah, I don't, if, I, I if, you, if you made an point. argument to make Hellblasters A, and he is part of the reason yeah. why you made Hellblasters well, A. I think that chaplain is bumping down below him again. Because so, the chaplain is going to buff any melee unit, whereas okay. the lieutenant is going to buff <laughs> any unit. So if you Literally wanted to go need. all out on those Hellblasters, you could then you could For then sure also power. attach a captain every single turn, use the Storm of Fire stratagem, and then your Hellblasters would be minus four, ignore cover. Yeah. And that would be free to do every turn. Lethal right, hits, sustained hits. Talking... All right, so 10 Hellblasters, a lieutenant, a captain with the upgrades. 400 points, you're talking. Okay. But I mean, all... It... Here's the question. It, All it 12 of things. those would, would fit inside a rhino, correct? No. Yes. 
They're all Tacticus, right? I mean, no one's doing it, but they Rhinos would all fit. Can't carry Tacticus. And they know what the fuck can they carry then? Surely, Rhino. Twelve Adeptus and Stars infantry models. It cannot transport jump pack wolf and Phobos oh, Gravis during Terminator tactics. or Tacticus. So oh. it can carry a tactical squad or devastators. Ex excluding Tacticus character models that begin. That's a bit weird. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So if let's just join tactical squad. He could. Yeah. Okay. But then but, you wouldn't want yeah. to. But yes. Okay. So you, 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 if you put twelve of them together, you could put them in a land raider. That would be the play. I don't, I don't a four hundred bolt death bolt or repulsor. Yeah. That is something that you could do. Um. But yeah. But I, I genuinely think he's he might be the best character we have for so far. I think so. All right. Let's go into the sangry priest. Uh, yeah, this is the cool. foot slogging sangry priest. He can join <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Put him in the bin. Uh, uh, um, he can join literally nothing. Yeah. No, 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 that's not true. He can join Devastators or Tacticals. And what benefit does he bring those? Five f feel no pain and plus one AP in melee. Cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, bin made, how many points is he? Like 75, I think. Didn't even look him up, I'll be honest. So, I mean, so obviously you want to put him with a melee unit because that's literally the AP buff. If it's cheap enough, you might think, I want a 5 up feel no pain on my Devastators. 80 points. He's not cheap enough. No. no. Fix your keywords, GW. <laughs> Fix your indexes. What's up next? Stone Guard Veterans? Yeah, looks like. I really just like how they got rid of the melee we weapon options for the Stone Guard. So they all Their, have a um, pistol. Their special ability got worse as well, didn't it? Oh, much worse. It got nuked to the ground. So After their special ability is the reroll wound rolls of one if they attack your oath of moment target. Which is um, it's not nothing. No. They can all have combi weapons. They can all have bolt rifles or stern guard bolt rifles that have devastated wounds, heavy rapid fire one. 100 so, points or 200 points. 200 points for 20 shots at 24 inches, strength 4, minus 1, 1 damage, dev wounds. So realistically, you're going to do like 3 or 4 dev wounds, best case scenario, at 24 inches for 200 points. To me, that sounds like a pile of shit. Ooh. Well, hang on. Demon uh, demon and at the infantry 4, then every wound does a dev wound, right? Oh, you were talking about the combi weapons. Sorry, I was talking yeah. about the Stern Guard rifles. You get half as many shots if you take the combi weapons, and if for some reason your BS is worse. Yeah. I don't know why they're BS4 if they're using combi weapons. I know it used to be if you fired the second weapon, you got a minus for your ballistic skill. You only get one shot. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? So if you take 10 models, you'll get five hits, you'll get two or three wounds, which will be dev wounds. Yeah, exactly. Oh, rapid so, fire, so within 12 inches, it'll be double that. So, four or five wounds. Four or five dev wounds. Four or five dev wounds for 200 points? Is that worth it? On infantry only, remember that is. Yeah, on infantry only. I feel like it's not worth it at all. Um, you could attach a captain to get the lethal hits and sustained or something. You could you Left could do all that, but uh, I feel like it's... Blasters. I feel like people were running these at the start of the edition when they were cheaper. Yeah, because the Oaths was much better than it is now. Yeah. And their ability, where they get to shoot twice, was much better than it is now. So yeah. now they're crap? They've been nerfed into the ground a bit, really. Yeah. yeah. Are they just C? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. It doesn't look good for them balancing this codex out, does it? Uh, well, this is because this is all foot slogging Tacticus stuff, frankly. Mm -hmm. this is, this but even if you were a regular Space Marine player that were, that were playing flogging, you know, you've got some of that in your army. I don't know. Uh, let's go on you to... a little bit, but not necessarily this stuff. I mean, we all know that come Phobos stuff, there's some really good stuff in Phobos. We all know that come Gravis, there's some really good stuff in Gravis. True. Where did Terminators fit in? Sorry? Where did Terminators fit in? We're doing them uh, the same they're, time they're as we do Gravis. With the Gravis ones. Oh. Yeah. Because they're all like heavy infantry type stuff. Um, all right, let's talk about tactical squads next. They can okay. obviously declare charge. Sorry, at the end of the declare battle formation step, before any units have been set up, this unit can be split into two units, each containing five models. Oh, I didn't even realize they could do that. Yeah. 
it's it's well, it's not completely shit. So they're the one unit that gets to keep combat squads. Yep, and that is their unique ability. Wow. You can run them in a very really small unit, but you've got to bring two, effectively. Yeah. How many points are there? 160 points or something, aren't they? Yes, 160. So, uh, 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 effectively 80 points for five. That does you, make them cheaper than intercessors. It does, but you can't don't only run five. You have no. to run ten. Indeed. And you only have one sergeant, so only one guy would have melee weapons, and you can only take one special weapon, you can only take one. Yep. So you'd have like five guys with a missile launcher and five guys with a flamer, and then the sergeant with a power fist. But they can be joined by Gabriel Seth. <laughs> and Captain Corbulo. So, um... Sergeant Twin Lightning calls, which is just a funny image in my head. Oh, man. Shall we put them... I mean, Games Workshop made a point of writing, you'll still see tactical squads coming out of Rhinos in 10th edition. Don't fret. How many tactical squads coming out of Rhinos have you guys seen? None. You... Actually, you... that's not true. I ran it once. Okay. <laughs> I actually not, thought you'd both frozen like there. Just let me laugh. I thought you'd both frozen because neither of you moved. I was like, oh shit, the call stopped. <laughs> I, I would never expect to see this in any kind of even vaguely competitive game. Are they, the, are they worse than the priest who can't join anything? No. No. No, they're not worse than the priest who can't join worse. anything. They're, they're better than Gabriel <laughs> Seth. Um, Ultimately, they're, they're cheap different. marine bodies, which has some value. Do you, do you want 80 point action monkeys and two squads of them? I mean, scouts or are would better. you rather buy Agents of the Imperium for 40 points a squad? No. Or scouts for whatever they are. 55 points with and can disappear all shit and and every turn. Amazing, useful. Yeah. yeah. No. I think these guys are top of D then? Yes, unfortunately. Yeah, so. so. Alright, next up, the Tech Marine. Tech Marine is the only character I would consider putting an S tier. I was going to say he's very, very, very good. Yeah, I loved him all the way through ninth, and we've gone in the tenth. And since the Space Marine Codex comes out, certainly I still love him. Yeah, I think he's possibly the only the only drawback of him now, if I'm correct here, is it's difficult to do the repair because you have to preempt which vehicle is getting damaged. You it need also, to move. It also the, depends detachment related as well. Um, because you have to move next to the vehicle because you do the repair at a different point you do the repair in your command phase now yeah. so you need to so that's the thing that's difficult with them um but i'm actually okay putting them in s tier because you you do see them in lists they do obviously give vehicles plus one to hit which is very good yeah yep. quite often a vehicle gets destroyed within 12 inches so they have seven attacks on their axe that's the thing that happens very commonly they have three attacks for their sorry they have three damage on their server warm the yep. forge bolter really isn't bad either yeah. Um, now, the Iron Storm Detachment is one of the most powerful Space Marine detachments, and it, its most powerful buffs can only be given to Tech Marines, and it's all vehicle focused. Yeah. And yeah. I, I love the fact that if somebody blows up your vehicle, he goes crazy. <laughs> you get seven attacks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's got a two, two up save, which is better than most of our other characters yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you've got to hit him with high AP, uh, and he's low and operative as well. We forgot to mention that if you're within three inches of vehicle, too. Yeah. So. so how many points is he? I think they're at 80 for a tech marine. Let me check. Now, just to preface this ever so slightly from what I said earlier, that these are auto takes that you'll see in every single list. You won't see him in literally every list. There are list archetypes. Which I'm sorry. Are he's 60. won't be useful. 60 he's 60. Points. Yeah. But frankly. Jesus Christ. 60. If you've got any vehicles, run him because at 60 points, let the vehicle get blown up and watch him blend or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and even in that the like if you've got a land raider, well turn one you'll just make land raider hit on twos. That's going to be pretty useful with those four god hammer last cannons, isn't it? Yeah, if you're not ready to redeem. Uh, yeah. So if you um, want to have a couple of redemptors, walk up towards midboard where their resilience is all hell. Have a tech read next to them to buff their hit rolls and heal them a little bit as they go. Yeah, sure. I've run two. Okay. Uh, finally, one there were one tech yeah. read for each one of my redemptors. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're like all my redemptors. Said, Same, hang on, redemptors minus one to um, damage. Damage, yes. Yep. Two up they're all hitting on twos. Yep. And a two and up on the save. Recovering three 
They'll be recovering D3 wounds a turn. Yep. yep. And the Tipman can't be shot because he's low up. Yeah. And there are two of armor safe and they might have cover and you can armor of contempt him. Yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, okay, yeah. S tier. Finally found an S. Uh, yeah. Right before Animal. Tycho the Lost turns up, is he going to be an S? <laughs> yes, yes, he. Of course he's not. And only if S stands for shite. <laughs> Uh, so he gives a unit advance and charge. He obviously um, basically rerolls hits because he's got the black rage stuff, which unfortunately yep. makes him OC zero. He does do a boatload of mortal wounds if he gets killed in yep. combat. He's 90 points and he can only join Death Company on foot. That's it. And you still need to have a chaplain around to make that death company on foot useful because otherwise they're OC0. Yeah, so, within 12 inches. They don't need to be part of the same unit, but nearby. No. So I think based on that, he becomes kind... If if he if he could give them some OC, I think he could be really good. But or if he got doesn't. a chaplain nearby for other purposes with another unit somewhere. Yeah. Sure. But, that, but then I think you're paying other points for another chaplain you might not necessarily yeah. want to take. So, like, I think he's B at best. Maybe he's just above uh, Mephiston. He's definitely not in, in the dumpster tier, but I wouldn't put him in. He's good in most armies. I'd, I'd put him next to me. He's a nice buff to Foot Death Company. I mean, I could see an argument for running two units of Foot Death Company and seeing a chaplain in one and him in the other one. Yeah. That would be the way to do it, yeah. I'm yeah, that would be the way to do it. Would, and would, they, would they fit in a rhino, surely? Uh, yes, they would. Yes. So there yes, you go. There's your, there's your Death Company rhino. Ten Death Company... One led by a chaplain, one led by... Tycho the Lost. Tycho the Lost. And I think he's better than Mephiston. That gives you something. You think he's better than Mephiston. Um, yeah, yeah. That's fair. I feel like I'm more likely to run him than Mephiston. And I mean, he can do, was it, nine mortal wounds when he dies? Uh, yeah, yeah. So basically the mechanic is when he dies, you roll a dice, you add more to the dice roll if you're fighting the enemy warlord, and if you roll, if you got a six, yeah. you do D3, or is it D6 plus three mortal wounds? Yeah, and he re-rolls all his hits, which is always useful. So Yeah, yeah he's not bad, actually. He's, he just, he's just very limited charge, in what he's uses. Do so you need to make your death company kill things a bit more, but you don't want him to take an objective? Yes, then bring him. No, done. Yeah. Um... So that is uh, the first, the part one of four, I guess. Yep. For the tenth edition tier. Are list. you gonna are you gonna bother to put a proper title on the next one, John? Because that create a single unit use tier list is offending <laughs> me for the last two hours. I wonder if I can edit that out. I don't know if I can. Oh god, that'd be funny. So for clarity, uh, this episode one is infantry. The other two episodes we have to cover are jump units and phobos. Um. The next one will be Terminators and Gravis and Bikers and Lone Ops and Miscellaneous and Super Heavies. So that's all the other random crap, basically. Yep. Uh, and then the last one will be Vehicles. vehicles. Or then we might mix up the order a little bit. Yeah, just... We might not necessarily be in that order. Yeah. If, if we want a feel-good episode, then we'll do Vehicles next, for example. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. And if Games Workshop finally released the FEQ next week, despite us finally making this tier list, then at least oh, we'll us the making FAQ, it guarantees they're going to do it. So yeah, like, absolutely. we have to, we have to publish probably, this We've waited so later. long to make it, hoping yeah. for something. I, I've yeah. had so much hope and expectation that GW wouldn't be this crap and they would actually update this stuff that I have argued for us to hold back doing this as long as we've held back doing it. But uh, there comes a point where we're just going to say, they're not doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, well, the only thing you... maybe if they do do it, we can film a little addendum or something. We will. Yes. Yeah, we will 100%. Well, we did with the custodes video on Grotz. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for being here. If you haven't checked out Tony, me, and Mark every second week, the yep. Grotz in a Vox. There'll be a link to the Grotz channel in the video description, so please come over and check us out there. Uh, well, we, we did do things that aren't necessarily always Blood Angels. Yep. Yeah. They might occasionally do the... be Star Wars stuff or random other games and things. And we did do the... that, was, that was such a good episode that nobody watched. <laughs> I was going to say, we did well, do the tier list of the space... of hardcore Blood Angel information. Yeah. We're just going to keep cutting John off now on his own yeah. channel. Yeah, yeah, because uh, apparently we talk over each other, and that's a thing. That's our theme. That's our theme on the grots, yeah, if you want to hear it. Unprofessional. I'm sorry, John. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry, but I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was going to say this we did do a channel. tier list. I should, I should display you more respect we should, of the of the space channel, screen. We just come in and slide it off. Ooh, in and out. Look at the fancy green screen. 
<laughs> he doesn't go right. to the East Coast Pro Channel. We just like, no. <laughs> just turn it on for the Pro Channel, huh? Is that, is that yeah. what happens? All right, thanks for being here, guys. Uh, more tier lists to come. Please like, subscribe. You know the drill, guys. Uh, All the stuff. Yeah. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Good night.